I, I got to do a speech. Hey, I'm kind of nervous. Uh, that's got to be the thing that's going to cause me the most grief and unhappiness in my life. I got to do a speech. I've got tips for you, baby. Don't you worry. Stay oh, tuned. Oh, good, good, good. It is said that the two number one things that people fear are death and speaking in front of an audience. Third must be taxes. Well, that's, um, no, those are givens. Oh, right? No, those are like, uh, yeah, that was Benjamin Franklin talking about yeah, death, and death and taxes. Two things you can't avoid or yeah, two absolute certain certainties. Things. Okay, you're talking about fear. Fear. And what was the Jerry, <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld said about Yeah, that? Seinfeld says, you know, in, in regard to that quote or that statistic of, you know, people fear public speaking more than death, he said, so what you're essentially saying is that at a funeral, you would rather be in the casket than giving the eulogy. <laughs> so it just doesn't make sense. Leave it to Jerry. I tell you. To put a proper spin What's on going that. On? What's the deal with being afraid to talk in public? That sounded like uh, uh, Ferris Bueller's... That sounded like... Uh, what's <laughs> yeah. his name? Cameron. Yeah. So I'm doing the voice of Rooney. Mm -hmm. All right, anyway, so we're All talking... Right. It's Jeff and Scott. We're talking mm -hmm. about ways to be happy. How to be happy. Can I be happier? Yes, you can. How can I possibly be happy if I have to give a live presentation? Oh, gosh. If I have to be up in front of my peers or worse in front of a paying audience or a conference, a sales event, yeah. you know, wherever you're called upon to be like, you got to give this presentation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there, there's a couple of things that I like to do personally that are going to make sure that it establishes your credibility. That's one thing you have to realize is that you're the subject matter expert when you're in front of the group. Don't think that uh, for a minute, you aren't good enough to be doing what you do. Now, if you haven't done any preparation, you, you might have to work on that a little bit. But you're the subject matter expert. A couple things that I do uh, to make sure that people know right off the bat that I'm the guy, I've got control of the room, is I'll start with a quote or a stat or a joke. You know, uh, th those are two or three of the things. I mean, when you when you stand up in in a room, for example, and, and I'll say. Uh, uh, we're going to be talking about some uh, pretty technical stuff today. Let's say you're in front of an IT group, right? And uh, some of you might be, uh, well, it kind of reminds me of a group, or, uh, of a quote by Oliver Wendell Holmes. He said, uh, I would not give a fig for the complexity, or for the simplicity, this side of complexity, but I would give my right arm for the simplicity, the other side of complexity. Now, you're going to blow everybody away right there with that quote. I don't they, even know what you just said. See? And then you go back and you explain how it's like, you know, remember when you were driving a car, you thought you knew everything until you got in the car. Oh my gosh, I've got this mirror. Da, 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 da. You're on this side of complexity. It's really hard, but after you do it for a while and you know it, now you're on the other side of complexity. So you unload a quote like that or something from Albert Einstein or whatever, and people are going to know instantly that, okay, I need to kind of sit up and, and listen to this person. So a quote, a stat, a story, storytelling is yeah. huge. We could talk a lot about that. For today. sure. One of the big things, of course, of uh, mm -hmm. kind of just, you know, being calm and relaxed and, and uh, being ready to speak is, we've talked about this in other episodes, but are, you know, little things that you do before you go on. You know, maybe it's, uh, say, a prayer, you know, or maybe it's uh, do some sort of breathing exercise. Whatever it is that can mitigate some of the nervous energy that you do need some, you want to keep some of that because it, it gives you energy, but you don't mm -hmm. want it to, to be over, you know, for it to overcome you completely. Um, so one of the things that I do is I make, sh and this is all in advance, is complete preparation. You know, the more prepared you are, um, the less you'll screw up. I mean, that seems fairly sure. obvious. But the more prepared you are, the more confident you are. Because if you know your material cold, mm -hmm. backwards and forwards and inside and out, you literally can go on stage or stand up or wherever it is that you're doing your presentation and not worry. You can almost not care because you know that you have it so committed in your brain. You've worked so hard to get this material ready. You, you, you deserve to free yourself up and not worry about it, especially once you've established the fact that you're the SME. This is your topic. This is your stuff. You've been invited to speak on it, and that's for a reason. Nobody knows what it is that you're going to talk about except you. So you really can't screw up. Yeah. Have you ever sat through a death by PowerPoint? Well, I think we all have. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So, so what obviously we mean by that is sometimes, at least in my experience, you got to put all your stuff on a slide. You got five or six bullet points. Don't do that. 
whatever you do. It's just, it's so, uh, so rely less upon your slides. And when it comes to slides, uh, let's say you've got 30 that you got to go through and you got to get to know. Learn five a week or five a day, you know, for the week. And then by the end of the week, you're almost all the way there. Don't feel like, oh my gosh, it's Wednesday. I've got to learn this thing. If you take a little chunk, spend an hour a day, by the end of the week, you're like, my gosh, now all I have to do is link every five or 10 slides together and I'm ready to go. Hmm. Or conversely, you know, do a presentation where you're obviously where you're not relying on your slides so much, where if, if it's not real t content heavy, like bullet point text heavy, obviously don't make it that way. Yeah. But by the same token, don't give up on all of the different media that's available. So, you know, PowerPoint or, or, or uh, any other macromedia director makes some really cool flowing mm -hmm. motion type presentations. There's a lot of different formats and softwares out there that can make, you know, even Prezi. the Keynote on yeah. Mac is a pretty decent yeah. tool. But the point is, is utilize every bit of, of uh, visual eye candy to keep your audience awake, um, interested, because if they're just focusing on you, you had better be, you know, not just a subject matter expert, but the subject matter expert in the whole world. With you know some eyes thrown in. What was that? Oh, we got an ice maker got going some on. some ice makers going on here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, be the absolute guru. And then you can get away without people having to look away at slides or whatever. But most of us, probably yourself included, aren't that compelling or captivating or exciting to just look at you for an hour straight. So use all the different resources that are available to you. I mean, why not? So if you're going to use PowerPoint or a deck, Make sure that those slides support what it is that you're talking about mm -hmm. without giving away every single word of it or without it being just pure text heavy slides. Look, hand, give them handouts if you want them to be able to read bullet points. Have them take notes and you say them from memory or even use for the slides just key words, one or mm -hmm. two words on a slide and then images, you know, uh, clips from the internet, a picture, an illustration, a quote, Whatever it is, but, but again, that death by PowerPoint happens in so many different ways, and it's because we over-rely on the PowerPoint. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not that boring. People still want to see you and hear you talk. They just don't want to hear and see you talk the entire time. Yeah. It's nice to have a, a little distraction, something else, music elements. Yeah, a little video videos. thrown in, yes. all of that stuff. Have you ever had a projector fail on you during a presentation? Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. So that's the test. You got. It's usually the computer, actually, not. Yeah. My, it's usually not the projector. It's yeah. usually the computer. Yeah. How would blue I feel? screen of death or right? whatever? Yeah. If my if my computer crashes or if the projector goes out, am I confident enough to know? to be able to get through the rest of it without having those slides. Boy. And if you can get to that point, you are golden. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, he talked about humor a little bit. Here's the key to humor. If you're not funny, naturally, <laughs> don't try to be. Because generally that does come off as really fake and like you're trying way too hard. On the other hand, you don't have to be funny to be fun. You know, you can have a lightness about you. You can put a smile on your face and have a twinkle in your eye. You can joke with people without expressly telling jokes to them. And that comes off in your demeanor, being informal. When you first get out on stage, after you've established your authority and who you are and kind of, you sort of even physically can take command of the space by the way you walk, by the way you position yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, don't just come out and start rambling back and forth and pacing with your head down because all that tells everybody is that you don't know what you're talking about, you're not prepared, and when you're not making eye contact, it's because you're trying to think of something to say. Yeah. Remember, preparation is key, but if you come out there and you own that place and you, and you walk with purpose to places and you stay there and you look at people in the face and you make a connection with them, eye to eye to eye. Now don't stay too long on their eyes because that makes them uncomfortable. But it's just a quick glance so that they know that you know that they're there and make sure that you can make, there's sometimes there's obstructed seating mm -hmm. in some of these hotel rooms. You've seen the pillars and the columns. Yep. They're hiding people. Make sure you take a little step over and see that they see you, you see them, but don't linger on any one person too long and be careful not to keep going back to the same people. Often yeah. we, we lock eyes with people that are good looking or that appear to be listening to us or actually are looking at us because sometimes other people just have their head down listening. Yeah. 
But be careful that you don't fixate on one or two. It makes them uncomfortable. Yeah. They still may be looking back at you, but they're going, please stop looking at me so yeah. much. Yeah. There's 387 people in this room. Yeah. I'm not the only listener. Yeah. You know, the other thing that that reminded me of is if you see somebody texting or typing away on their computer during your presentation, let it go. All right. I think that a lot of people make the uh, erroneous assumption that uh, well, they can't be doing something more important than what, I, than what I have to say. Well, how do you know that that person is not texting their babysitter because there's an emergency going on at home? So, uh, or it's perhaps even more pertinently, pertinent, pertinent, no, pertinent no. <laughs> perhaps more importantly, nine times out of ten, they are Googling you. Yeah. They are looking you yeah. up on different websites or they've taken a picture of you or of your slide and they are posting it to social media. Yeah, putting it on LinkedIn. They're putting hey, it on Twitter. Yeah. They're putting it on Facebook. I'm watching this really cool presentation. Yeah. I've, I've been burned by that. Yeah, yeah, you point someone out, hey, well, you couldn't get, well, you, you, yeah. you not being pertinent. What are you, an ad? <laughs> <laughs> you a social media addict? Yeah. Addict. <laughs> well, you can't take a minute and look at me. And the, half the time they're like, hey, butthead, I'm talking yeah. about you right now to my yeah. friends. So I've learned very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just let those things pass by. <laughs> What, uh, what, what are the top three places you've presented in? Okay, good question. So we'll come back and cover this topic in other episodes because uh, we are professional speakers. That's what we do. We've been doing it for 20 years, uh, mostly individually, but we've also worked together in various settings. So our final bit here are the top three cool locations. And I've got so many. No, it's no, hard to narrow it down to three. Hard. I'll get mine my, first. Okay, your number, you go, my, my number one is... Uh, number London. one or number three? Number, or, I'm sorry. Start number backwards. three. Yeah, number three is London. I've, got, I've, gone, I've been able to go to London to present uh, at, at companies and corporations, and, and it's just, it's really cool. And, and the crowds are great, too. It's just so fun to present to a big group of, of people from a different culture. They speak the same language, but it's, it's just, it's fun. You know, whether it's Manchester or Birmingham or London itself, the whole, the whole country. Now, I, I, my number three is also in England, which mm -hmm. is interesting. I went a little more specific with my cool place, and I chose Emirates Stadium. Oh, I've, I've presented Where that. Arsenal uh, plays. Oh, you know what? Mine was Etihad, yeah, up in Manchester. Etihad. 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 Yeah. Etihad. Oh, where Manchester plays. Manchester City. Yes, Manchester not City. Not Old Trafford. Yeah, no, It's pretty cool when you can go speak at a venue that's like that. And in other places in London, I've spoke at the London Eye, not the London Eye, the Magic Eye. It's okay. this, I think is what it's called. It's this hidden away, tucked away, it, uh, little magic where the magicians of London meet. It's a s private club. Oh, I've heard of this. It's got like a fake front door, and you go in, and it's this wacky old mansion. Very cool. But that mm. those there's my number three. All right, what do you got? Awesome. Number two. Uh, number two is India. I've Freaking been there. India. Yeah, India. You go wow. all the way. And that's kind of for us, Salt Lake City. It's back to back nine hour flights. It's crazy. But once you get there and you start again doing the conferences and the other things and, and the cool little People venues. Are fantastic. Oh my yeah. gosh, they are so generous. Yeah. And I, when you walk into the hotel, they are they are on your back the whole way. Can I can I carry your bags up? You know, it's just and you're that, literally like, could you get off my back? <clears throat> yeah, I, yeah, exactly. In the middle it. of the night, the guy's still standing at the foot of your bed. Could I you know no, it's okay, I'm okay. India. <laughs> they also do the you also have you know the cobra coming out of a basket. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm yeah, like, are you yeah. kidding me? What is this? A 1940s Humphrey Bogart yeah. film? I mean, totally cliche, but they have. Yeah. It's mostly for the tourists. Number two yeah. for me, uh, Daytona Speedway was a really cool venue down there in Florida. You know, the home of the big Daytona 500. Yeah. Uh, but out in the midfield or whatever they call it, the infield. Yeah. They have a really cool venue, and uh, you know. While I'm in there speaking to a group of managers and leaders from disparate organizations, you know, you get cars out, you hear them, wah, yeah. wah. It wasn't yeah. during the race, of course, <laughs> but it was pretty cool. Number one for you. So that actually reminded me, this is kind of two, uh, one and a half was Churchill Downs. I've done that one. That was a fun one. That was really, really cool. So number one for me is the Santa Monica Improv. Uh, wow. Which which A and E used to do their you know their weekly evening at the comedy improv. show evening at the Improv, and I wasn't present. I was doing my act. I got to do about 12 to 14 <laughs> minutes there at the oh, club. It was packed. Cool. And uh, to be on that stage, knowing how many megastars had performed Venerated. there and started there, and it was just legendary. A I tell you. Comics.
He was wonderful. Hey, I didn't Burke. meet Bud Selig, though. I think that was the guy's name with the little... No, Bud Selig's the commissioner of the... Or, no, yeah. MLB a or something. Baseball. What was his name? <laughs> Bud Friedman. Friedman. Friedman, that's who it was. Bud Friedman. That not get the mention. I'm just giving him a voice. I don't know what he sounds Did like. Did you do your number one? My on? number one, I just put down here, is Barcelona. Uh, uh, we used to, when we were younger men, we lived there, uh, not as roommates, but we were there around the same time. And uh, it's just the greatest city in the world. There's no question about it. And I've been able to go back several times for various clients who take their sales reps and other leaders to cool off sites. And because I've lived in Barcelona, because I know the Spanish language fluently, we both speak Spanish fluently, um, it just makes for a great time. I can relate to them in a very local way. Of course, all of the people I'm talking to are coming from Canada or the U.S. anyway, but still anywhere at all in Barcelona and down in Sevilla too. I've done different speaking throughout the country of Spain, and it's just like kind of going home. Yeah. Uh, but some fun stuff there. So you may not ever end up being a fabulous professional public speaker like Jeff and I, um, and you can find out for yourselves if you'd like us to come speak. Sure. But you probably will have an opportunity to speak in public, maybe even doing the eulogy at someone's funeral. Eesh. If so, remember these tips. Rewind this tape. <laughs> this tape. The tape. Listen to me. Where are we from? What am I, 110 years old? <laughs> if you want to be happy, learn to connect with your audience. And if you do that, you will have a successful presentation, speech, pitch meeting, sales call, whatever it is, and you'll be happier for it. Absolutely. Well, hopefully some of those tips made sense to you yeah. and uh, you may actually use them if given an opportunity. Uh, trust us when we tell you that the key to all of this is preparation and relaxation because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Have you had a horror story of giving a presentation, a funny story? Then let us know. Put it in the comment section. Did you imagine people in their underwear? No. Uh, Put that, just draw a picture of that for us. Yeah. I'm curious to see what that looks like.